morning boys and girls. We've got a new book for the next two weeks and it's called The Smartest Giant in Town. And if you look here, you can't actually see all of the giant because he is so enormous. We can see his big feet and his legs, but nothing else. He's got lots of lovely characters. And the book's by Julia Donaldson. George was a giant, the scruffiest giant in town. He always wore the same pair of old brown sandals and the same old patched up gown. Can you see the patches? I wish I wasn't the scruffiest giant in town, he said sadly. He does look a bit sad. Poor giant. Look how tall he is, way above the houses. But one day, George noticed a new shop. Can you tell what kind of a shop it is? Yes, you're right, look, they're selling different clothing. It was full of smart clothes, so he bought a smart shirt, a smart pair of trousers, a smart belt, a smart stripy tie, and some smart socks with diamonds up the side. Look at that pattern and a pair of smart, shiny shoes. Now I'm the smartest giant in town, he said proudly. Look, his face is smiling, he's pleased with his new things. George left his old clothes behind in the shop. He was about to go home when he heard a sound. On the pavement stood a giraffe who was sniffing sadly. What's the matter, asked George. It's my neck, said the giraffe. It's so very long and so very cold. I wish I had a long, warm scarf. Cheer up, said George, and he took off his stripy tie. It didn't match my socks anyway, he said, as he wound it round and round the giraffe's neck. Oh, it made a wonderful scarf, don't you think? Thank you, said the giraffe. Look, the giraffe's not sniffing sadly anymore. He's happy. He's pleased with his new stripy scarf. As George strode towards home, he sang to himself, My tie is a scarf for a cold giraffe, but look me up and down. I'm the smartest giant in town. And to be fair, I think he looks very smart. George came to a river. On a boat stood a goat who was bleating loudly. What's the matter? asked George. It's my sail, said the goat. It blew away in a storm. I wish I had a strong new sail for my boat. Oh, he's looking very sad. Can you guess what's going to happen? I bet you can. Cheer up, said George, and he took off his new white shirt. Oh, it kept coming untucked anyway, he said, as he tied it to the, the mast of the goat's boat. It made a magnificent sail. Thank you, said the goat. What a kind giant. George strode off with no shirt and no tie, singing to himself, my tie is a scarf for a cold giraffe. My shirt on a boat is a sail for a goat. But look me up and down, I'm the smartest giant in town. Still looks very smart with his smart shiny shoes, his trousers and his belt. But next, George came to a tiny ruined house. Beside the house stood a little white mouse with lots of baby mice, look. So tiny, a little mouse with lots of baby mice. They were all squeaking. What's the matter, asked George. It's our house, squeaked the mother mouse. Look how small and tiny the house is. It burned down and now we have nowhere to live. I wish I had a nice new might help them. I wonder what he's going to give them this time. OK, 
and you again. I'll bet you were right. Cheer up, said George, and he took off one of his lovely shiny shoes. Oh, it was giving me blisters anyway, he said, because that's what new shoes do. As the mouse and her baby scrambled inside, oh, the shoe made a perfect home for them. Thank you, they squeaked. Oh, and you know, he's still a happy giant. George had to hop along the road now, because he's only got one shoe, but he didn't mind. And as he hopped, he sang to himself, my tie is a star for a cold giraffe. My shirt's on a boat as a sail for a goat. My shoe is a house for a little white mouse. But look me up and down. I'm the smartest giant in town. So he's still happy. What a kind giant. <gasps> this looks exciting. George came to a campsite. Look at all the tents. Beside a tent, a fox who was crying. Oh, what's the matter? asked George. Oh, it's my sleeping bag, said the fox. I dropped it in a puddle. Oh, and it's all wet now, and I wish I had a warm, dry sleeping bag. Let's see what happens. <gasps> Cheer up, said George, and he took off one of his socks with diamonds up the side. It was tickling my toes anyway, he said, as a snot, snot, as a fox snuggled into it. It made a very fine sleeping bag. Thank you, said the fox. <gasps> Look at him, a very happy fox with a lovely new sleeping bag. George hopped on, singing to himself, my tie is a scarf for a cold giraffe. My shirt's on a boat as a sail for a goat. My shoe is a house for a little white mouse. One of my socks is a bed for a fox. But look me up and down. I'm the smartest giant in town. Ooh, we're meeting somebody new here. George came to a big squelchy bog. <gasps> Beside the bog stood a dog was howling. What's the matter? asked George. It's this bog, said the dog. I need to get across, but I keep getting stuck in the mud. I wish there was a safe, dry path. Cheer up, said George, and he took off his new smart belt. Oh, it was squashing my tummy anyway, he said, as he laid it down over the bog. Oh, look, it made an Excellent pathway. Very pleased was the dog who now didn't have to fall into the bog. Thank you, said the dog. The wind started to blow, but George didn't mind. He hopped on, singing to himself. My tie is a scarf for a cold giraffe. My shirt's on a boat as a sail for a goat. My shoe is a house for a little white mouse. One of my socks is a bed for a fox. My belt helped a dog who was crossing a bog. But, oh no, my trousers are falling down. Oh, and I'm the coldest giant in town. Suddenly, George didn't feel happy anymore. He felt very sad. Oh, and shivery and not at all smart. He stood on one foot and thought, oh, I'll have to go back to the shop and buy some more clothes. He turned round and hopped all the way back to the shop. And you know, children, why? He had no clothes because he was such a kind person. He'd given them all away. Oh no, but when he got there, the shop was closed. Oh no, cried George. He sank down onto the doorstep. And a tear, oh, it ran down his nose. He felt as sad as all the animals had been as he'd met on his way home. Then, out of the corner of his eye, he saw a bag with something familiar sticking out of the top. George took a closer look. How wonderful they are. What do you get? Oh, it's my 
gown, he yelled. My dear old gown, with the patches on and my sandals. George put them on. They felt wonderfully comfortable. I'm the coziest giant in town, he cried, and he danced back along the road. Oh look, he looks as happy as Puffy. Outside his front door stood all the animals who'd helped. They were carrying an enormous present. And look, if you look here, it says, to George. Come on, George, they said, open it. George untied the ribbon and inside was a beautiful gold paper crown and a card. Look inside the card, George, said the animals. George put the crown on his head and he opened the card and inside it said, you gave your scarf to a cold giraffe, your shirts on a boat as a sail for a goat. Your shoe is a house for a little white mouse. One of your socks is a bed for a fox. Your belt helped a dog who was crossing a bog in the sea. So here is a very fine crown to go with the sandals and gown to the kindest giant in town. What a lovely story, boys and girls. The giant must be feeling what? I think he's feeling very pleased with himself because he had been so kind and now all the animals that he'd helped have said thank you.